I recently made a video for Motion Ray where I replaced the entire background of a New York City subway station with the glorious masterpieces of Vincent Van Gogh. This video came out so well that I thought I would break down how to replace the background of a scene with 3D set pieces that were actually originally 2D paintings from the 18th century. And before we jump into this incredible world building tutorial, I'd like to let you know that this video is sponsored by my sugar daddy, Squarespace. The reason why this is an absolutely perfect example for this uh, editing trick is because there's existing 3D dimensions in the painting. You'll notice that there's a right side and a front side of these two buildings here, which means in After Effects, we'll be able to take the right side and rotate it all the way to the right, which just replicates in a 3D space the 3D depth they've made here in this 2D painting. Same with the ground. The ground is a perfect 3D dimension that we can use. We can cut out the ground, rotate it 270 degrees so it's flat, and we can put things on top of it. So right here you can see I've cut out all of these pieces, which is the not fun part. This is pretty self-explanatory. The only thing here I feel like is important to go over is the fact that once you cut out a piece like this, you then have to recreate the background of everything you cut out. So once I cut out this front building here, I have this gorgeous set piece, but what I'm gonna do is if I hit Control and click on the layer here in Photoshop, I can just click, I can hide it, and then on the original painting layer, hit Delete. So now we have this giant hole that needs to be filled so we can then cut out this this building behind it. So now that Photoshop has its own like AI generative fill, this is actually super easy. I'm gonna grab the pin tool and just make a path that's around this entire hole. And once we've made our selection, we can come down here, right here to our generative fill box and just click it. And bam, look at that. It gives us three examples and you know what, this one rocks. So now what I can do is I'll select these two pieces, the new generative fill and the original layer and I'll convert it to a smart object in Photoshop. So now this is just one giant piece and we can have this building put back in front of it. And now from here, we can then cut out this second building like this. And once you've made your selection, you cut that out and now you have the building behind this one. And we have perfectly recreated the background of our front building. And you have to rinse and repeat this process a little bit if you wanna do this completely. For example, I want the ground in this scene and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually cut everything else out except the ground. So we'll use our pin tool to make a select where we have our entire ground selected. So once you have the entire ground selected, we'll just hit Shift Control C and then Shift Control V to copy and paste. And if you Alt click on this layer, it'll solo it. And now you'll see we have this ground here. So what I like to do is then take the ground and then fill all the empty space that's left after cutting it out, make your selection. And then in the generative fill box right here, we'll hit generative fill. And you can even see like it kind of gives you some wonky options, but then it'll give you something like this where it basically basically extends the ground texture really, really long. What we'll do is we'll then use a lasso tool to fix any parts of this that don't really look like the ground anymore. And bam, we've covered it up. And this layer itself might look crazy, but once you rotate it 270 degrees in your 3D space, this right here is gonna act as a really great set piece for the ground. So we'll select all of the layers of this, like the generative fill layers over here on the right, and we'll click convert to smart object. So it is, so it is just one giant piece. And once you've recreated all the pieces like this in your Photoshop painting, You'll just select all of your layers, right click, and right here, quick export as PNG, and then we'll put them into a folder. So now, back in After Effects, what we're gonna do is we're gonna 3D track our scene that we wanna put new things in the background of. We're just gonna pick a random target in After Effects and create solid and camera. You can see this solid right here, and we'll just put it upright, and you'll notice that the track is perfect. We can ignore the solid for now, but the important piece that we want is actually this 3D camera tracker. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna copy this camera because if you look, um, it's 36 millimeters, which isn't a custom preset here in the After Effects camera options. And we're copying this because we're gonna create a completely different composition where we will build our 3D set pieces in which we will then bring into this scene here. So we'll go over to Project and we'll click on this button right here to create a new composition. And we'll name this Scene Build. And I will paste this camera in this layer. And what I'm gonna do is just extend it for the entire scene. And I'm gonna delete all the keyframes that's in this layer. I'll go to our folder where we have all of our buildings and set pieces cut out, and I'm just gonna build the entire scene in this composition. So I'm gonna take this big back, um, the back building of our painting, and this is super important, turn it into a 3D layer, and we'll see that there's this option down here that says one view, we're gonna change it to two views, and you'll see in the right panel here that we can see like the 3D aspect of
of our building right here. And we're going to leave it like this so we can see the right side is completely flat in 3D space. So to fix that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our original layer here, we'll straighten it out so it's upright. We'll grab our rectangle tool and actually just mask out everything but the right side of this building. We'll duplicate this layer and then on the mask, we'll actually just hit subtract. So we have two different pieces here, the right side of the building and the front side of the building. We're gonna grab the right side of the building right here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the anchor point and move it to where the mask is. So when we unsolo this, we can grab the Y rotation layer and just completely rotate it right like this. You can see in our second view that it goes from being a completely flat layer to having the layer on the right side. And so now if we hit C to grab our orbit tool in our 3D panel, you can see that our set piece is now becoming 3D like this. And because we've rotated it and the way the camera works, we can actually just scale it up like this. So the right side of the building is large. And so now you can see when I put this in the original scene, it's gonna have this 3D aspect to it. So now I'll drop in this building right here, turn it 3D, and you can see here we can decide whether we want it behind this building or in front of it. And obviously we want this building to be in front of it because it is in the painting. And what we're gonna do is we're going to scale it up to match how the painting would look. And for now, we'll solo this layer. We'll grab our rectangle tool and mask out just the right side of it, duplicate this layer, and then we'll change the mask to subtract. So now we have two different pieces, the right side and the front side. And on the right side here, we'll hit Y to grab the anchor point and move it exactly to where the mask is. We'll use this custom view on the right here to see how we're moving this in 3D space. We'll take the X rotation and make it completely right like this and grab the scale tool and just move it like this. So now this building is also 3D. And what we're gonna do to make it easy to move these two pieces as one is if you hit Shift, Control, Alt, Y, that creates a new null object. Make sure that it's 3D. And what we're gonna do is we're going to grab these two pieces of this main building and link it to this null. So now we can use this null object to move this building, rotate this building, or scale it up. So now we're gonna use this null to move this piece around to match how it looked in the actual painting. Now that looks pretty good. Create a null object for this back building as well. Use this null to basically customize how this looks. I think this looks really good because now you have these two buildings in 3D space. We can keep building the scene out. So for example, I have this one building that's the left side of the first building. We can use this to see in 3D space how we're going to put it. And you can see it's like overlapping the building. We want it to be right on the building, but not overlapping. So I'm going to angle it to be flat like this front building and just move it to the right like this. So now it's just an extension of this first building that looks 3D. And then I'll bring in the ground. You remember that giant ground layer that we made? So I'll bring in this huge ground like this. Of course, turn it into a 3D layer. And now we're gonna hit R on this and under orientation, the first option, um, we're gonna type in 270. That's gonna lay it flat against the ground. You can see here it floating over top of everything. We're gonna bring it to the bottom and we're gonna use the 3D access tools to see where it's intersecting with the ground. You can see right here that it's overlapping with the bottom of the building right here. So I'm actually going to hit wide, grab the anchor point tool, and I'm gonna move it to this position right here. Scale it up until it matches how it looks in the painting. And then in your effects and presets, this is super important. If you type in corner pin, we'll double click this to put it on our object. And then we can use corner pin to make it um, fit the perspective that we would want. And you can see right here that the back side of this building isn't touching the ground right here. We can also take this layer and then put the corner pin effect on that as well. And what we can do is we can like drag the side right like this to match the ground. But then just be smart that once you move one angle, you'll have to move a few until it's realigned back with the original painting. So we'll use corner pin until everything matches the same perspective and is touching the ground. And now look at that. This painting is now in 3D space. It has its own ground. I'm gonna keep repeating this process. So I have cut out multiple parts of this front ground. So now once we have another ground layer, we'll make it 3D and remember we're gonna rotate it 270 degrees on the X axis so it's completely flat. And we're gonna bring this underneath of the ground like so. We're gonna scale up the heck up. So now we have this whole entire scene as a little 3D painting. Now, we wanna replace the background of our original clip and add in this yellow painting. So to make this an easy and smooth process, I'm gonna hit Shift, Control, Alt, Y to add another null. We'll name it Master Null because we're gonna connect everything um, to this null right here. So I'm gonna grab a pick whip of every layer and bring it to the master null and I'll turn this 3D. So now this null controls everything. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna select everything except the 3D camera tracker. 
control C to copy it. And now we'll come to our layer where we've 3D tracked everything and I'm gonna hit control V. You don't see anything yet, but if we go to two views, we can hit C to fly around the scene to try and find where our green tracked solid is. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our master null and we're going to move it until it's where the green solid is. Cause then it'll match the perspective of your camera. So you can see right here, I found the location where this building is overlapping with the green solid. So now we have an entire 3D scene exactly where we want. You can see it back here in this painting. So now we'll scale it up right here in 3D space. And of course, this is the annoying part that everyone knows how to do. I don't need to give you a tutorial. You need to mask out everything like I've done here. So now our building is behind me in the New York City train station. I'll get rid of the green solid and use the master null to scale this up. We can move it in 3D space like this so you can see all the 3Dness that's happening. So now you can step off a train and walk directly into a Vincent Van Gogh painting. And as you can tell in the actual animation that I made, I've replaced everything in the background with these 3D painting set extensions. But I kept rinsing and repeating that process I just showed you. Like there's this painting right here from Vincent Van Gogh of like a windmill. And you can see here, I brought it into that composition where I just build set pieces and I cut out the roof, um, the windmill, and all the different pieces of it where everything has been masked out as its own individual piece. And then I'm just rebuilding it as a 3D set extension. And I've brought it into my original scene where then you can see I've dropped it in the background and it's now a 3D set extension that is over here. I hope that wasn't too confusing for you guys. This is how I do creative world building in After Effects when it comes to taking a 2D painting and turning it into a 3D scene. Comment down below if you have any questions those are my tricks. I hope you enjoyed that. And now, of course, it's time to thank my amazing sponsor, Squarespace. From online stores and marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is your best option for making a website. If you want an incredibly customized and personalized website, well, you're in luck because with Squarespace's new design system, Squarespace Blueprint, you'll be able to select from professionally curated templates. So you'll be able to pick a design that is good for your vibe or brand. And with their optimized SEO tools, you'll be able to get discovered way faster and way easier. And let's say you're a business person and you've got products you want to sell. And with Squarespace's flexible payments, you'll be able to accept every form of currency, Apple Pay, credit cards, PayPal. You'll even be able to use pay later features. So your online store can sell your goods and you'll be able to make it as convenient as possible for your customers. And lastly, if you don't want to rely on just the professionally designed templates that Squarespace offers, Squarespace's Fluid Engine lets you edit and customize from your launching off point. So you can use one of these templates as your starting point. And then from there, use all of the incredible editing tools that Squarespace offers for you to make every page look exactly how you like. And everybody, the best part is I got you a discount discount code. So if you go to squarespace.com slash Will Carmack, you'll be able to get 10% off your first website or domain. Thank you for sponsoring this video, Squarespace. I hope you all check them out. And don't forget, where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will, and have a nice day.